Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here and welcome to another episode of Days of Night. I'm on the hunt for a secondary 35mm camera. Uh, and what do I mean by secondary? Well, viewers know that I limit myself to two cameras per format. Uh, so two 35mm, two medium format, uh, two APS, two 110, two instant, you get the idea. So for me right now, all I've got is one solid 35 millimeter camera. That is my Nikon F100. And the other rule that I make for myself is that the more lens compatibility that I have, uh, the more that I can spend on each lens. If I don't have to buy five 50 millimeter lenses or five zooms or what have you, then I can take the money from spending on those five lenses and put it all into one. Uh, for example, I do video on an Icon D780 and I'm shooting with a 35 millimeter lens that I also use on my Nikon F100. So obviously that means for me that the second 35 millimeter camera has gotta be a Nikon, and it also has to be compatible with G lenses because I use modern Nikon glass. I do love the backwards compatibility of Nikon cameras, and that is why I chose Nikon as my main uh, system. Um, because if I want to try a new focal length, I can go out and I can buy a cheap Vivitar lens and see how it goes first and then upgrade later if I need to. Uh, yeah, I do need that modern G lens compatibility. So for all that reason, I have decided that this year I'm going to be doing a bit of a mini series on Days of Night testing Nikon SLRs. I'm going to get my hands on as many Nikon SLRs that I can and basically test them. And when one comes in that is better than the previous one, the previous one, it uh, goes the way of the whooping crane. And I'll keep building up until I've got what I think is a great secondary 35 millimeter SLR. Originally, I was going to go with just another Nikon F100, keep things simple, and it might end up that way. If I end up uh, reviewing like 10 Nikon SLRs and none of them are as interesting as the F100, then I'll just go ahead and I'll buy a second F100. Definitely keep things simple. Definitely keep that muscle memory uh, nice and snappy. But anyway, with all that being said, let's get started. The Nikon F60 was released in 1998 and was the successor to the Nikon F50. Uh, it's also known as the Nikon N60, that being the successor to the Nikon N50. It comes in black and champagne silver, and mine is in champagne silver, which makes it look kind of ugly, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, I paid about 60 bucks for it, plus shipping on eBay. I honestly don't know if that is an overpayment or not. I don't think that this should be a buying guide. I think if you find one for less than 60 bucks, great. The only thing I will say, though, is that uh, by the end of this, you might not want to pay more than $60. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the F60. I will go over some of the functions with you. It's a pretty simple camera. Uh, you're not going to see a lot of surprises here. After I show you its functions, I'm going to show you some test photos I took. I shot four rolls of film um, while testing this camera, and I did it in two different situations. The first being um, a continuation of my COVID project, which is filming graveyards. If you want to learn more about that and why I'm doing that, I'll leave a link in the description. I also photographed a recent rally for Ukraine, which was a really great field test for this camera, and that's where I put the other three rolls through. After that, I'll give you some pros and cons, and I'll let you know if you should even bother with this camera. Okay, guys, here's my Nikon F60 in box. And, uh, you know, I decided to buy one in box because why not? And I was a little disappointed because the box isn't complete. Uh, it doesn't have the whole cover. You'll see what I mean in a second. But, you know, it's nice. It's nostalgic. It makes it feel fresh. 
you know what I mean. Popping right in here, it came with the manual, uh, but then it doesn't have the, the top cover here, it just has the mold. So here it is in all its glorious champagne silver. Uh, again, it is a little on the ugly side for my taste. Now, I love me a good silver camera. When I had my Fujifilm series of cameras, I had a XE2S, which was silver, and an X100, which was champagne silver, and I definitely preferred the straight up silver. But yeah, let's go over some of the basic functions, and then I will show you my test photos. So like many Nikon SLRs of this era, the on switch is up here at the front, and on the left here, You've got your manual aperture shutter and program modes. In addition to that, you have a full auto and sports mode and landscape mode and macro mode and, you know, all those fun things. Nothing new there. Over here is where you've got your exposure compensation. And then back here is your main dial for adjusting either your aperture or shutter. Uh, depending on the situation. Here are the two main lenses that I tested the camera with. Uh, the first here is a Nikkor 28-80 3.3-5.6 to and the second is a 70-210 to f4-5.6. Now the one thing that I found interesting is that this 28-80 to is listed as a G lens, as you can see there. However, when mounting a modern G lens, this 50 millimeter 1.8 G, this will not autofocus. The aperture will close, but it won't autofocus. Here's how the 28 to 80 looks on the camera. Pretty good uh, form factor for running and gunning. And here's how the 70 to 210 looks. It's uh, pretty heavy. Once you got this heavy D lens on and the heaviness of the F60, it becomes a pretty noisy, heavy camera setup. And um, I photographed the Ukraine rally with this particular setup. And there were a couple of times where my focus was racking and I thought I was bringing so much attention to myself. So not the best setup. Again, if you do have a modern G lens, uh, the aperture will adjust when you fire, but it won't focus. And I don't know why. Maybe because the G lenses were so new, they changed the way that they worked. This is a really basic camera. There are no bells and whistles. There is no ISO control. So if you were looking for that, um, good luck because it relies entirely on DX. If you load a roll of film without DX coding, it defaults to 100. And if you want to push or pull your film, you're going to need to use exposure compensation. Your main dial here will adjust your aperture and aperture priority and your shutter and shutter priority. And then in manual mode, uh, this button here acts as a shift for adjusting your aperture and then the main dial on its own works to adjust your shutter. But yeah, not much to it. That is the Nikon F60 at a glance. The last thing to mention that it does have a great metering system. Uh, it gave me really good solid exposures. It uses a matrix metering system. It also has a center weighted metering system, but the, <sighs> the frustrating thing is that you can't change it on the fly. The only way you can change to center weighted is to switch to manual control or as the manual says here um, when you're in auto exposure lock function so that is the Nikon F60 let's take a look at my test shots
hope you enjoyed those photos. I have to say, I'm really happy that I've been sort of finding my uh, way these days, uh, sinking my teeth into several projects, uh, that being the uh, Alberta Grain Elevators uh, documentation, as well as my COVID project. And I think I'm going to be covering, at least from a Canadian perspective, uh, more of what's going on with the Ukraine situation. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, not to knock anybody who shoots, just goes out and shoots architecture and that kind of thing. I do enjoy that. But I found for at least the last couple of years now that I've been getting a little stale with just shooting uh, cityscapes and that sort of thing. So I think there's so much going on in the world right now that it's an obligation for me to photograph uh, more current happenings. And I think that's the best way I could put it. I I feel like this is a creative work in progress. I don't know where it's going. I don't know what I'm going to end up, end up doing with it. I just know that I'm shooting first and asking questions later. So talking about some pros and cons, first we'll go with the pros. It has a solid light meter. It, uh, it's got a good light meter. I got proper exposures. And that's it for the pros. As far as cons go, first right out of the gate is that there's no ISO control. I cannot believe that you can't change the film speed on a Nikon SLR that was released in the late 1990s. It is incredibly frustrating. Now, how often do I change my ISO setting? Not very, not very often. I don't push or pull film very often at all. Um, usually when I've got expired film, I like to do that. But if I want to adjust ISO control on my Nikon F60, I need to use exposure compensation, which renders that setting useless if I'm already using it to you know, change the ISO. I mean, it doesn't render it completely useless. I can always swing it the other way. Like if I've overexposed, then I can underexpose, but I can't overexpose more. But what a weird thing for Nikon to leave out. And it's not the only camera to leave it out. I will be reviewing other cameras that do the same thing. And that's always going to be my number one gripe. Why can't you change one of the fundamental settings of a camera? It would be like not being able to change uh, the aperture. It's ridiculous. Uh, next con is that there's only one focus point. And that makes things frustrating if you've got it on a tripod and you want to be able to change focal points to focus on something on the left or right. Um, my F100, uh, it's got five, one in the center and then one on each you know, 12 o'clock, three and six and nine, but which isn't, you know, the greatest, but it's definitely more than one. And it allows me to, um, you know, sort of have an easier time uh, making my composition when I need to half press and then adjust. Uh, or if it's on a tripod and uh, something is on the left or the right, then it makes it just that much simpler. Having only one kind of a pain in the butt. And another little gripe here is that I also find it heavier than it needs to be. Uh, I know that praising a camera with, uh, you know, more heavier materials is some people's preference, but I've also recently held the Nikon F75 and it's super light and plasticky, but I don't care. I think that that's fantastic. I think that uh, first off, it's working. So the question of is it going to work in 20 years has already been answered. Um, and, you know, if you drop it, well, you know, it's going to mess up your camera no matter what it's made out of. So I don't really necessarily care about that either. And then last thing on the list and the thing that pretty much kills it for this camera is that there isn't uh, G lens compatibility. If I can't autofocus, what am I using it for? So am I going to keep this Nikon F60? Nope, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to put it up and sell it. I I think there are other better Nikon SLRs out there, and I'm looking forward to testing those out. And that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It, uh, it you know, not all reviews are going to be the... Uh, 
the happy, positive experience that uh, I hope they <laughs> are, but that's the way it goes. I didn't like this camera, but I hope to like the next one more. I think that whichever one I review next will probably um, beat this one in the little competition I've made for this mini series of Nikon reviews. I'm going to make a playlist uh, for Nikon SLRs. I'll leave a link for that in the description. Uh, and if you like what I do around here, you can support me on Patreon. Uh, through my Patreon, you get things like early access, free prints, and more. Check out patreon.com slash Azrael. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic. <laughs>